Hi everyone, and welcome back to another video. Today I'll show you how to make my 50% whole wheat sourdough bread. First things first, let's feed our sourdough starter. I like to use a 1 to 4 ratio, meaning I leave 15 grams of starter behind in the jar and add 30 grams each of whole wheat and plain bread flour. Then, add 60 grams of lukewarm water to the jar and give that a good mix, making sure to scrape down the sides so that all of the flour is nicely incorporated. Give it all a tap and add a rubber band to mark the height of the FET starter and to help you monitor the rising of it. Next, we're going to prepare the bread dough. Add 250 grams of whole wheat bread flour and 250 grams of plain bread flour to a bowl. I like to work with 75% hydration, meaning you add 75 grams of water to every 100 grams of flour, which is 375 grams of water overall. Start to mix the flour and water together, and at this point I also like to add 12 grams of salt. Start kneading your dough until everything is nicely mixed and the flour is fully hydrated and set aside to let the gluten develop. Your starter will roughly take 4 to 5 hours to rise, depending on the temperature in your house. And once the starter has risen to about double its original size, give your rested dough a knead and stretch. You will feel how soft and elastic the dough has become, which means that the gluten has relaxed and is ready for the next step. Add your active starter to the bowl and using your hands, really work the sourdough starter into your dough, mixing it well. At this point, I also like to do a few slap and folds, meaning you slap the dough down and fold it over to really start developing the gluten structure and the elasticity. This will help your dough hold its shape and also trap the air that forms during the bulk fermentation and lead to a nice rise of the bread in the oven and also those signature air bubbles throughout the crumb. Leave your dough for 30 minutes and when you come back, wet your hands and start performing your first set of stretch and folds. As the name suggests, you start by lifting one side of your dough before folding it over. Rotate your bowl and repeat until all four sides have been folded over. In round two, you repeat the same procedure of stretching and folding. Leave for another 30 minutes and in round three, we'll move to a different technique called the coil fold. To do this, start by wetting your hands and then using both hands, lift the dough from the sides and folding under the front side of the dough. Rotate your bowl by 180 degrees and do the same on the other side. Proceed also with folding under the remaining two sides of your dough. This is a more gentle way of stretching your dough and building the strength of the elasticity without letting those lovely air bubbles escape that are building up with the bulk fermentation. One last round or two, depending on how much the dough has risen and how well it's holding together. The dough should feel really light at this point and will hold its shape. You should be able to do the window pane test, meaning when pulling a corner of the dough, it can be stretched into a thin membrane without breaking. See those air bubbles? That's the perfect sign your starter is doing its magic. Lightly flour a surface and gently tilt your dough out of the bowl. Using a floured bench scraper, start to lift the sides of the dough into its center. Proceed by flipping your dough over and with your bench scraper, start to roughly shape your dough into a round ball. This is only a pre-shape, so don't worry about it looking perfect. Flour the surface of your dough and in the meantime, we can prepare the banneton. Generously dust your proofing basket with rice flour to make sure your dough won't stick to the banneton when you try to remove it in the morning to bake. For the final shape, flip your dough over and gently stretch out the dough into a flat round shape. Then fold over the sides of the dough into the center one at a time to start building tension. 
I like to use almost like a zigzag zipper motion to seal the dough. Afterwards, with the help of your bench scraper, start to roll up your dough from one side and shape it into a nice and tight ball with a bench scraper or your hands. By pulling the dough ball towards you, you will build nice tension, which will allow for a beautiful rise, aka an oven spring, when you bake it. Place your shaped dough into the proofing basket and also add some additional rice flour to the sides of the dough to prevent it from sticking. Transfer your baby into the fridge and let it rise overnight and we'll come back to it in the morning. Good morning! It's the next day. Took the bread out of the oven and I also put my cast iron pot on preheat in the oven. Your bread should have risen a little bit overnight. There you go. So let's get our pot now. Flip your proof dough onto a piece of baking paper and using a sharp knife or a razor blade, score your bread in whatever design you like. Transfer the bread to your preheated cast iron pot and bake in the oven for 45 minutes. So we still have a few minutes left and I'm gonna take the lid off now so the crust gets extra extra dark and extra crusty. She's a beauty! Of course she still needs to cool but Really nice ear. It smells so good and it makes your entire home smell like smell like fresh bread. Mmm, so good. 